Hello and welcome to another video on how to use the Firestore uh, and Firebase Auth plugin for Bubble. Uh, on the last video, I, we configured the authentication options for the plugin for my Bubble app uh, and made it so only the tasks belonging to the user where the owner uh, of the task is the current user. So the owner field, uh, the owner field matches the the unique ID from the user or the UID from the user will be shown to this user. Uh, but I said, I also said that there is, there's still a security concern here because if someone is knowledgeable enough of Firestore, uh, one can do some code in here on the development tools from the browser that I just opened by clicking function 12 uh, key on the keyboard. Uh, someone can still get data that, that one was not supposed to see. So the user data is still available for reading from the Firestore database. So to avoid this kind of problem, what we must do is to set rules for our database. These rules are similar to the security rules or privacy rules from Bubble that we configure here on data privacy, but they work a bit different. So in Bubble, what it does, if we set a rule like this one, for instance, where only the current user can see uh, his own data uh, and no one else can see data on the users, if we query users, it will still bring us data and we'll, it will bring us only the current user. But on Firestore, this works a little bit different. If a security rule is not matched for any of the documents we are bringing for the front end, the entire query will fail. So even these tasks that the, our user has access to will not come from the front, for the front end because uh, Firestore will deny the interaction from the user's client with the server with the Firestore database. So that's a major difference on how these two uh, databases, the one from Bubble and the one from Firestore uh, works. Um, so let me demonstrate a bit of that. Uh, for that, I did some coding before prior to for the videos just to uh, actually made it, make it easier and a little bit quicker to set everything up and I'll try to explain. So we have the security rules. It's a bit of code. Uh, can escape uh, avoid this code right now but uh, you can read more on how these uh, security rules work on Firebase's documentation I'll put a link to for that down below on the video um, so you can check it if you want but the way we read these rules is like so uh, we get a service here in this case cloud firestore and we do matching conditions for the security rules we want to set. So we want to match any databases uh, or actually any documents in the database we are uh, making a query to. And below this, below this database, we want to match all documents and allow the user to read or write data. If a certain condition is met and we, we use this notation and this hierarchy to set this rule uh, so in this case this is uh, the default settings for the development period so what Firestore does for us is to allow read and writing data reading and writing data if the time of the request is less than this specified date which is a month later from when you set the the Firestore database for uh, from when you create the database um, this is a bit arbitrary it's just for you to experiment a bit but you will have to change it later and uh, you could change it to for instance false which is what it sets when you choose the production mode in, in, in which it will uh, deny any queries for the database so if we do that just to show a bit of how this works it now will deny at database level all reading and writing to uh, to the data and you can see 
this happened instantaneously here in my app. So if I reload the page, I won't see the tasks I was supposed to see from which I am the owner. And we'll see uh, a console error here saying that I'm missing or having sufficient permissions to access this data. So now, even someone with knowledge of on how to query data from Firestore using JavaScript can't get this data from our database, which is good. We want to protect our users' data. Uh, but we want to also allow our users to read this data. So we can't, we can't just leave this like false or, or true. We want to set other conditions that allow us to, uh, to provide the correct data for our users. That's why I did some code in here before. I will just copy and paste it here and explain a bit of what I'm doing. So now I made two matching rules. What I did here is create, uh, I want to create matching rules for each of the collections I have on the day on my data here. And actually, let me go to our data here first. So that so that we can recall what we have, we have a users collection with data on the user, and we have a uh, tasks collection with data from the of the on the tasks our user has created and we have set a uh, owner field in which uh, we can find the unique id from our current user and we want to make make it so the user can only access the tasks that belong to him and uh, that have the unique id his unique id in the owner field so that's the rule we want to set that's kind of what this does but there's still something we must do uh, after as i will demonstrate so first we have a matching rule that matches the users uh, collection it allows creation of a document for everyone so the condition is true which means it will always be true which means anyone can does do that uh, that is creating a user we need this to sign up a user uh, and reading deleting writing and updating data from the user's collection can be done only if the request.auth object is not new which means the request will be done by a logged in user an authenticated user uh, and that's what we want we want the user only the user logged in to be able to change uh, one's data and the other rule we have here is for the tasks collection we, and we want to allow reading and writing uh, writing also covers the delete and update and creation of data so only doing write here would be enough here too but i just wanted to showcase a bit of which options we have here uh, we have here uh, so i want to allow reading and writing if the request.auth is not new so the user must be logged in and this is this is an and operator is a boolean operator to say that this other condition must be true also uh, and the condition is the resource.data so the data from which uh, from the document from which we are getting data the owner field must be equal to the uh, user's unique ID that's what this uh, rule is doing. So if I publish, I would expect to see the data in my front end, but that will not happen. And I will tell you why, but the, our console error has uh, ha is gone now. What we have here is only an error from the plugin that says that we still have insufficient permission to access some data. But the data didn't show here and if you go for uh, the usage, no, no, actually not the usage, uh, on rules, you go to monitor rules and you can see that there was denies, uh, there was a deny for queries made for the database because of the way the plugin is implemented that was done to make it more powerful at filtering data for you. Let me explain on what I mean with that. So we have these filtering fields, and these filtering fields have uh, many options. 
similar to bubble that was the goal here for you to filter your data but uh, they are not done on querying level so they are not done on the firestore query we do that's why even if i'm filtering here it's not uh, showing my data here because i must filter the query itself so for that to happen uh, we created an option down here which are the privacy filters and we only set it two kinds of privacy filters which are the most common ones uh, filter by a user field in our case is the owner field so we can transfer that filter for here so the owner must be equal to my firebase of current users id and so we can get this out of here and this will do the, the filtering on query level so the data I'm getting will not be available. Uh, actually, data outside from this filter will not be available on the front end. Um, I can do another video in the future showing showcasing a bit of how to set uh, roles on users, but actually it's kind of self-explanatory. Self uh, if you do Firebase auth, you have an option to uh, set user roles it must be done from the back end for security reasons and you can get the user ID and set roles for it like admin or I don't know uh, editor or anything you like I will not do that for this app in particular but it's good to know that this option is out there so now that I've done uh, my filtering on the privacy filters I should get my data back so let's check on that and there it is. Now I have a secure database with security rules set it and that allows me to still see my data. And you then can uh, make other filters uh, like you, you can say that some data can only be accessed by an admin or an editor like the example I, I gave uh, just before, uh, just now. And well, that actually covers the basics on how to use the plugin for Bubble. I hope that helps you to get all the powerful tools from Firestore into Bubble. We plan to expand this plugin with more functionality in the future, so stay tuned for that.